I made like a sort of mind map of all of the case studies that we looked at. Floor five collective, one of the members, Adriana, we met them when they were showing us the gallery. They formed a collective on the fifth floor with other BIPOC women artists that were working in the BA fine art program. They, <coughs> we went to their studios in set and they talked about just the necessity to have these networks because once we're out of this university, it is, you are uprooted, you're floating, it's the worst feeling ever. Um, then we did School of the Damned. Shran, do you wanna talk about that? Uh, School of the Damned is like actually a pretty strange um, structure because it's like, they're, they're sort of, they're not an alternative masters per se, they're just like a post-grad um, thing where like a bunch of um, students just come together and they formulate their own curriculum. So we had, uh, what was her name? Natasha, Natasha Eves. Um, she's running, she's actually running the Constructed Textiles Lab right now. Mm -hmm. um, but like that aside, she was also part of School of the Dance and she came and she talked about like the things that she did while she was part of this curriculum um, over COVID, which was like, they had a radio program um, and they had like little online discussions about work and stuff. Um, and it's quite strange actually, cause like it, it's like strictly like uninstitutional, but then people um, have started calling them like an alternative MA um, and that is you kind of like put that in the context of an institution so we were learning a lot about yeah like about about how like these different things like how people see the world around them and how all of these different structures just came to work together and like form certain like like ways of learning that like we just can't really get out of yeah also the notion about that during the COVID and when people, um, the group member are located in different locations mm. and the difficulty to organize uh, organization yeah, and yeah, try yeah. to make sense work. And also I think the tension, they also mentioned about should they open the um, school of the dam to everyone or should they limit it to only like a small uh, group of people? And how do they select the students? Um, and I think they're trying to find the alternative way to um, operate in the group, but also, as you mentioned, lots of people already been through the um, institution yeah. system, so they're still kind of doing the create, but trying to do... It's like they're trying to like, yeah, it's like they came out of a system and then they, um, like all they know is like this system and they want to break out of it, but like, the only way they know how to break out of it is just to continue doing it. So it's a bit, um, like it was really interesting learning about it because like, you know, we usually talk about, okay, we need to like break out of like these very fixed structures of learning. But then at the same time, it's like, if it's all that we know, it's really hard to actually break out of it. Um, and, you, and you don't have like a base like where everything mm -hmm. happens. It's all like, yeah. Through collaboration, they have to like find out or like sort it all out themselves. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's what we learned. It's quite fun. Um, and then the series of workshops, we also had a talk with the artist Raju Rage, who primarily works with networks of care. And they had a very honest sort of approach to teaching. They were also a student at the MFA at Goldsmiths, but they dropped out. And they were very honest about why they dropped out of this institution and we had a chance to look at their sort of collective called collective creativity who, whose toolkit itself inspired us to make our own and what we are aiming to do with this for the resource is um, when we graduate art school we're often found in a very tricky sort of situation because um, in art school, we talk about art and making, but nobody talks about like the under-discussed aspects of 
in gratitude life, which is Okinawa Tuesday, <laughs> <laughs> basically. And yeah, we're making, um, I'll show you a Padlet, but we're making, um, it's really rough, but I'm quite proud of it. Um, this is our introduction. So who is this for? It was for us, for teachers within the department and also the career service, whose video is quite lockable about <laughs> graduate <laughs> teachers. Because it, it's the most generic, the most like, yeah, like they have really nice upbeat music playing, people like walking through the campus, like yeah, I did this, I did that. But nothing very tangible. <laughs> so it's, it's, um, yeah, I, we've included a link here. And it's about students who have questions on their future, and it's about current students who see future students going through this. And and it's we want to share hopeful futures and make it a tangible reality for students. And it's a process of learning from one another and formulating our own research, and build a community on the practice of collectivity. The case studies explored in this research project have prioritized these networks of care that have made the practice of collectivity into a tangible reality, which makes us hopeful that things are within reach. And I don't know if we have time to talk about all the workshops that we've done. Yes. I think that we can quickly just mention a few. Um, I think the shift right is the fact, like the group we visited, um, it happened like 18th of May. I I can't believe the shift in uh, the margin has been go for that long time. And so I think shift rise is uh, located in the dust bag and it's a collective um, living um, group. Um, so a group of artists, some are clothes designer, some are theater producer and Joseph who is a director of the Shift Ride. Um, he kind of talk about how do they make decision together, how's the community living um, life looks like. And like at the very beginning, we thought it might be quite like utopian and like a paradise, but he does, he did like share very practical um, information such as the funding or risk assessment um, those like then I think also quite inspired for us uh, also they talk about during the COVID and how they managed to have a show in the domestic setting with a very limited budget and how they outreach the community with free tickets and lots of people they began to feel aware of the theatre there um, and for me, I felt the floor five collective um, visit and also Imajan um, came to today is really inspiring because we talk a lot about the life after graduate, after graduation, and because um, I think today we talk a little about, bit about individualism and collectivism, and somehow we thought um, the school trying to design and make the student think um, you are competing with, with each other. Um, but I think the floor five gives a very good example of you can collaborate together and they sharing information, sharing the open call, and, um, and they go to yeah. like share their studios, yeah. all of them together with them. They got to choose. Yeah. yeah. So adorable. Like the over summer, I think they were like visiting each other overseas as well. Mm -hmm. And then like one of the members came to Singapore mm -hmm. for like after, and it was so nice. They're so nice. It's so uh. And also, I felt this kind of um, conversation between the students who do in the fine arts and already graduate is so useful because you kind of can say what kind of path you can have after you graduate. We felt less nervous. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also being aware of there's 
in the current situation, there's a lot of uh, collaboration between financial um, innovation goals. Mm -hmm. and, but it's yes. just in the margin. Yeah. Can you bridge that gap when you try to? Because we all have sessions every Monday. Mm -hmm. So it's very regular where we come together and not just look at the design aspects of the publication, but everyone just kind of shares the labor of making it. And yeah, I would like to say we all have equal say in like how things go. Yeah. I think that that was one thing that, because the project was kind of headed by Michelle and um, Jana. <coughs> yeah, what happened? Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they, they really wanted to um, engage you know students that are coexisting but not communicating um, across their two departments which are like so linked so John is from the visual cultures department which teaches art history curating um, and then yeah Michelle's a, a veteran in fine art and it's just kind of crazy how you know curators are putting on shows and they need artists and artists need curators like it, it's it's a thing that requires a collaboration and and after graduating, you know, these are people that we, like as artists and curators, you, you want to have an open dialogue with, with these people and, and it would be great to kind of lay the foundations of, of, a, of a network or a communication or a collaboration, but you know, even before you're, you're sort of in a, in a graduate kind of world. So yeah, it's kind of just giving people a, a platform and space to, to collaborate in that way. And also we had Gord Campion part of this workshop and they gave very honest advice on arts council funding specifically why their proposals got rejected and what they were looking at um, and just sort of the implicit biases that exist within the funding application itself and what makes a strong application so it wasn't just that we were looking at collectivity without being grounded in the reality of how we need to know how to get funding, we need to know how to organize, we need to know these things. I feel like when we worked on this together, and we are working on it together, we're learning so much about how these networks can sustain themselves, and like, it's all effort that we put in. Also, Goat Camping uh, is from Diamond Pacific Group, and um, directly by Wikia Fendi. Um, I think they also, because it's called Go Can Canteen, and because they're also really interested in the food and the Chinese culture, mm -hmm. and they also have a working group to, um, we meet every, uh, it's out of the shift in margin, but I think how they, how that group work is quite interesting, because every week we just read something, share some, um, for example, um, go to an exhibition together um, or watch a film together. I think spending time to be this kind of bonding is so important. Um, should we move on to the performance? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, what, what I'll say. Um, it's, I felt like somehow the final course will kind of reject the uh, particular utilitarian discourses or the entrepreneur discourses because we think that means gonna the artist gonna lack of veteran autonomy but if we can't really make a living after graduation how could we you know like still um, continue our projects but at the same time I feel we also think about should we like at one point we think like right now the school is kind of seen as um, didn't equip the student enough but also should we um, equip the student go to the wall like pre-existing logic so I think the alternative model really um, let us to think out of the box yeah uh, we're gonna move yeah. to our performance great um yeah, does anyone else have anything else they want to say? Or yeah, we could. Cool. <coughs> okay, um, so if we like, can clear some space on the floor, stretch a little bit. Do you need this? Um, no? No?
Okay. <laughs> it's sometimes funny to communicate your actions oh. to one another and see how they dialogue as well. What was that? I wanted to do that You don't want it back, do you? This is terrible. <laughs> Thank 
<laughs> I am unleashing you from the chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm stuck on that one. <laughs> 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 something called the machine. So this is something where one person starts as the stimulus, the first piece of the machine, and then one by one we will all just attach ourselves uh, in a repeated movement and sound uh, onto the machine until we are one combined functioning machine. And the way we tried this out in a previous um, uh, sort of workshop was we were building the <coughs> education machine that we all were a part of. So uh, we did the first iteration was sort of like the current machine, so it could be a bit sort of faulty your your movement and sound. Um, you can actually like say a, a repeated word if you think it's applicable. Um, and yeah, so we're going to first build the current machine that we're in, 
and then going in the in the, the reverse order, uh, sorry, in, in the same order, so like the, the person that started the machine will then change to like a, a new imagined education machine in, in, a, in a new functioning way and then gradually one by one each part will change and yeah, so it's just about having that, that sort of development. So does anyone want to be the first cog in the machine? Who wants to step up? <laughs> I don't mind doing it, I'll, 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 I'll step up. Um, so yeah, we can attach, when I say attach, you don't have to literally like hold on to the other person, but yeah, just, just think about your sort of kinetic energy. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Num, 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 num. Num, 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 num. change. I'm going to start changing. Everyone carry on though. <laughs> Machine was still not doing great. Like, like, but at least the, the you real could express that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and not lie about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Um, so yeah, that, that was just a few little kind of warm-up exercises that we try out, and yeah, alternative ways of being and trying things out. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs>